Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to TechEc webinar series, our endeavor to empower techies. We believe that sharing of knowledge is the key to enhance our skills and grow us as professionals. With this principle in mind, we have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts to give you all a crisp insight of various domains. The topic of today's session is Success Guide, an inspirational guide to excel as a leader and CEO. Our guest speaker today is Ms. Uh, Professor M. S. Rao, founder MSR Leadership Consultants India. Professor M. S. Rao uh, is the father of soft leadership. He is an international leadership guru and an internationally acclaimed leadership educator, executive coach, speaker and consultant. He has 33 years of experience and the author of 30 books including the award-winning 21 Success Sutras for Leaders that has been selected as the top 10 leadership books of the year 2013 by San Diego University, America. His award-winning book Success Tools for CEO Coaches, Be a Learner, Leader and Ladder has been nominated as the best book for 2014 by Small Business Trends America. He has trained over 20,000 people so far. His vision is to build 1 million students as global leaders by 2030. He has been listed as one of the leading achievers around the world in Marquis Who's Who in the World in 2013. He serves as an advisor and judge for several prestigious international organizations including Global Leadership Awards Malaysia. He is the first Indian to receive prestigious international award International Coach of the Year 2013 from Comprehensive Coaching U. Inc. America. He is the first Indian to share his leadership wisdom in the podcast interview with prestigious Dose of Leadership podcast which is one of the top leadership podcasts in iTunes. He coined an innovative teaching tool, Mecca's Method, Leadership Training Tool, 11E Leadership Grip, Grid and New Leadership Training Tool. Learning Tool, sorry. Soft Leadership Grid based on his new leadership style, Soft Leadership. Copyrighted with Josie Bass, America. It is drawing international attention. It can be applied for organizations to improve their bottom lines and countries to achieve peace and prosperity. His award-winning research paper, Soft Leadership, A New Direction to Leadership, is amongst the most frequently downloaded in industrial and commercial training, Emerald UK. He successfully led a webinar on soft leadership organized by International Leadership Association America and has been honored with photos on the cover pages of prestigious international magazine, The Leaders International, Malaysia, October 2012 issue, and on the cover page of prestigious international magazine, African Leadership Magazine, September 2013 issue. So without further delay, I introduce you all to our guest speaker. Over to you, Professor Rao. Hello, good afternoon and a warm welcome to everyone. Let me take this opportunity to thank TechEc.com for providing this one wonderful platform to share my knowledge and experience on executive coaching, executive education and leadership. I am so honored to be with you today. I thank you for taking time off from your busy schedules to participate in this webinar. Uh, first of all, I would like to share with you about my award winning book, Six Tools for CEO Coaches that has been nominated uh, for an international award uh, nominated by Small Business Trends America and uh, that is leading number one in the voting presently. So if I win this award, I will be the first Indian to receive this prestigious international award. And on the topic, I led a webinar uh, conducted by TechEc.com uh, in the last month. The response was overwhelming and that requires a lot of voting. So this is the success uh, I have made. and. Uh, now, we'll, without any delay, I would like to get on to the webinar which, which I am going to talk about. This is about uh, the topic, success guide, an inspirational success guide, an inspirational guide to excel as a leader and CEO. This is about my upcoming author book. Let me tell you how I got this trigger of uh, authoring book. Uh, so far, I have authored 30 books, but uh, for every book, uh, I will always tell how I got this, that trigger. During my leadership training programs, uh, most of the executives have been asking me questions like how to fast track my career, how to become CEO quickly, like that uh, questions have come up frequently during my leadership development training programs at various levels. So I thought there is a need for this kind of book. That's the reason why I thought about it and uh, wrote a book of this nature and this is what I am going to share with you today. 
apart from this uh, reason, I am passionate in shaping students and enjoy spending most of my time with them to understand their challenges, to provide them with solutions. As my vision is to build 1 million students as global leaders, I consider spending my time with them an investment. And it's a great opportunity for me to understand their psychology, perceptions, expectations, and aspirations of career, success, entrepreneurship, leadership, and life. Vision to build 1 million global leaders. This is my lifetime ambition. The prestigious international publication, United Nations Post, featured my interview in which I shared my passion and vision to build 1 million people as global leaders. It received great response internationally. I decided to explore it further to provide clarity as to how to accomplish my vision. I wrote another article with a breakup of my blueprint of my passion, vision, execution and transformation and the UN Post appreciated it and published it. It's getting good response all over the world. I shared my lifetime goal to build 1 million students as global leaders with the students and participants regularly during my teaching and training programs. I also share it on my articles, blogs, books and social media. I am very much passionate about this prestigious non-profit project. I have already trained 20,000 students so far and I conduct classes, seminars, workshops and leadership training programs for students and employees. Whenever the educational institutions request me to provide training programs, I honor the request and visit with excitement to share my passion, vision and knowledge. Apart from my active involvement in grooming 1 million students directly, I am currently building a core team of 50 diehard followers through five bucket approach which will assist me, who will assist me to accomplish my goal. I am a follower of Mahatma Gandhi and Swami Vekananda. I have been inspired by Mahatma Gandhi's principles of truth and non-violence, also by Swami Vekananda who put India on the global map in Chicago conference with an emphasis on universal brotherhood and fraternity. He led from the front with his simplicity and humility. Under the influence of their ideals and ideas, I lead the movement to shape 1 million students as global leaders. Here is how I am going to do it. If you want to change the society, you need citizens who are highly committed and dedicated. Hence, I am looking for students and people with a positive, right and strong attitude to carry forward my passion and vision to build a better society to achieve the ultimate objective of global peace and prosperity. Presently, I have built a team of a few students and corporate executives who share my passion and vision with others. They are connected with me through my teaching and training programs. I send them emails and connect with them through social media. Sometimes they phone me. I have been building this team for the last seven years and I am still doing it by interviewing the prospective candidates. I am building a top 50 hardcore team. During my teaching and training programs, there are students and participants who follow my ideals and ideas and seek my career guidance and counseling. I have tentatively created a blueprint consisting of five levels of leadership to build global leaders as follows. In the first level, I invite students and the people who are interested in my passion and vision for discussion and counsel them. During the discussion, I look at various aspects including attitude, academic excellence, attitude of gratitude, persistence, team spirit, leadership abilities, continuous learning, and above all, how to make a difference to the society. I share with them my passion and vision to build 1 million students as global leaders. So I find that they are seriously interested in sharing and spreading my passion and vision with others on a non-profit basis. I include their names in the dedication list of my upcoming leadership books. This dedication helps them as a reference during their employment interview, apart from remaining as a lifetime gift. I will assess, sec second level is, I will assess their contribution and commitment towards my cause apart from their performance. If I find that they contribute to society through non-government organizations and non-profits, I will promote them to the second level. Periodically, I will have an interaction and discussion with them. If there is any need for my presence to inspire others who aspire to grow as global leaders, I will attend and address the conferences workshops, seminars on free of cost. Those who are found lacking, found lacking in commitment and dedication towards this cause and found to be fake followers will not get entry into the second level. Then I am talking about the third level. In the third level, 
I provide them free leadership training programs actively depending on our convenience. I monitor their performance. If, the, if these leaders maintain continuous enthusiasm to spread my vision and passion and share knowledge with others, I will elevate them to the fourth level. <coughs> I will check whether they are providing leadership training programs voluntarily on non-profit basis to others to groom them as global leaders. If I find them doing a great job and based on their commitment, contribution and performance, I will publish their interviews with photos in my other book outlining their aspirations and expectations, principles and philosophies and commitment and contribution to the society. In this way they get gradually exposed globally. In the fifth level, I will take 50 best brains who contributed with a heart to serve the society and introduce them into my international connections which I already have to enable them to grow as global leaders. At this level, all the 50 core team members must take a pledge to build 50 more core team as global leaders during their lifetime on non-profit basis to bring a positive change to the society. To accomplish my vision, I make use of social media which including my three blogs, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter and Google+. Plus. I post articles on career, leadership, motivation, success and learning and development regularly in my Facebook page and share with students. I am happy to share with you that my teaching profession has become the launching pad to accomplish my lifetime vision to build 1 million students as global leaders by 2030. This is how I am going to transform the society. Over a period of time more leaders are created by me and my top 50 hardcore team. We work as a team to make a difference to the world. When a stone is thrown into water, it takes time for the ripples to reach the shore. My initiative started to create ripple effects to make a positive change among some students. Once the ripples reach the shore, I can expect total transformation of youth for global good. I intend to infuse my passion and vision into the young brigade who are filled with lots of fire in their bellies but lack the right direction. I would like to become a change agent to shepherd the youth to groom them as global leaders. During my teaching and training programs, I find students with lots of energy and enthusiasm to lead our country, but they lack the right direction. They are looking for leaders who can show them the way. They are not happy the way things are happening around them in the society. We may consider them an impatient cohort, but when we observe closely and clearly, the youth is more worried about India. They are looking for fresh fresh blood to lead from the front. My role is to ensure that the right people are in the right place at the right time to enable them to grab the global opportunities. When a drop of rain falls into an ocean, it is without any significance. However, when the same drop of rain falls into a shell, it becomes a pill. My task is to make sure that the drops of rain fall into the shell and become pearls. Hence, I would like to make sure that the students don't lose their significance by going into the wrong path. I make sure that they enter into right path, careers and areas at the right time of their age to grow as global leaders with universal brotherhood and fraternity. Society is a collection of individuals. When all individuals think collectively to contribute to others, they can make a difference. Margaret Mead rightly remarked, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. And so we intend to change the society through a passionate vision and execution with a long-term view. Building one million global leaders becomes a strong leadership pipeline for the world as currently baby boomers are retiring and there is an urgent need to build leaders at all levels, especially at the senior level. These global leaders can contribute aggressively to make a difference. They can make India a prosperous nation and a superpower in the world. They can work in any part of the world to create a better world. I am optimistic that I can contribute my best as an individual by building a passionate team of 50 to build 1 million global leaders by 2030. In case of my untimely death, my top 50 hardcore team will continue my vision with a tremendous passion. Hence, I am committed and dedicated to my cause and above all, I am confident about my passion, vision, execution and transformation of students as global leaders with a global mindset to make a difference to the world.
In the slide number three, you can see my personal vision statement where I have written my own statement that speaks values about my commitment to the cause of uh, building 1 million global leaders by 2030. In the slide 4, you will find about unemployment versus unemployability. The McKinsey research shows that there is a looming crisis ahead globally due to shortage of skills among people. Previously, we found shortage of jobs and more qualified candidates. However, currently we find qualified candidates and less competent candidates with skill set, tool set and mindset to grab employment opportunities. We find the problem is acute among Indian students who pass out from education institutions with qualifications, not with competencies. It is known as unemployability which is different from unemployment. Indian students must enhance their employment opportunities by developing requisite skills in soft and hard skills to grow professionally. Do you want to grow horizontally or vertically in your career? The question might sound odd for many listeners whether to grow horizontally or vertically first. I read Stephen Covey's book, The Eight Habit from Effectiveness to Greatness in which he shared the wisdom of growing horizontally first and then vertically to touch your tipping point. Here goes the story of a Chinese bamboo tree. There is a certain species of the Chinese bamboo tree that when you plant it, you, you see nothing for four years. Just a little shoot out of the ground and that's it. You weed, water, cultivate, nurture and do everything you can to make it successful. But you see nothing. In the fifth year, this particular species of the Chinese bamboo tree grows up to 80 feet. Then once it had its root in place, all the growth went above the ground and was visible, giving evidence to the cynics of the growth that had been occurring all along. It is obvious from this story to strengthen your base to grow rapidly later. It's possible when you become jack of all trades first by spreading your wings in diversified areas first. You can test various waters and understand the ground realities. It is to know something of everything and everything of something to scale your corporate ladder. You can also become a crack shot through rigorous training, experience and practice. In my personal life, I prefer to have breadth of knowledge in various areas first and then depth of knowledge in a specific area to grow rapidly later. It's like strengthening my base. It's like preparing with hard work to lay out a blueprint for my, for my smart work. Of course, you must also consider your age, fire, passion to decide whether you want to grow horizontally or vertically in your life first. Do you want to become a CEO quickly? If your answer is yes, here is a message. The generation Y has high energy levels with a proactive attitude. They want to grow rapidly in their careers as the current global economic ambience is conducive for quick career advancement. They have the inquiry spirit and often ask why. They question a lot actually. And that's the reason that generation Y is often referred to as generation Y. Generation Y means generation WHY because they question a lot. This generation has several advantages that neither baby boomers nor Gen X had. They are goal driven with a long view. However, they want to scale higher position and reach the tipping point of their corporate career, that is CEO position. They must learn to work in line positions rather than in staff positions. Line positions are key positions and functional areas within the organization, while the staff positions are supporting positions and functions that mostly support line positions and functions. These positions are relative from organization to organization depending on its vision and mission. Employees must learn to differentiate these positions and plan accordingly to ensure quick career growth. Nowadays, almost all executives are competent in their domain and non-domain areas. Most of them are ambitious and goal-driven. Therefore, the generation Y must lay out their career plan well in advance and go by the road less traveled. Additionally, most of the executives are knowledge workers, 
with competitive spirit with an eye for top organizational slots. Hence, they must set goals with a long view by pursuing in line positions rather than in top positions to reach the tipping point in their careers. That is CEO position. Hence, lay out your blueprint now itself and execute smartly. Now, we will move on to the slide number 5. Here is an action plan for new CEOs. When Tim Cook took over from Steve Jobs as the head of Apple Computers, the expectations were higher as his predecessor was a legendary innovation leadership guru. When Jeffrey Melt took over from Jack Wells as the head of General Electric, the expectations were higher as Jack Wells was rated as one of the best corporate leaders in the world. It is a Herculean task for new CEOs to step into the shoes as CEOs especially when their predecessors were legends. In fact, the job of CEO is a highly challenging one. The position of a CEO appears to be easy and rosy for spectators, but not a cakewalk for the incumbents. Although it's not a complicated one, it is tough to survive and succeed as a CEO in this cutthroat competitive world. Here is a blueprint for first 100 days for CEOs. CEOs who can make solid first impression and deliver are destined for a huge success. It's a great opportunity for these new CEOs to use this time to project the image. That is formal versus informal, hands-on versus hands-off. Hence, they must be careful during the first 100 days in office. The concept of the first 100 days in office is widely used in the world of politics. It is also known as honeymoon period in some parts of the world is the period of make or break for new CEOs. These are the crucial and critical days whether you are a chief executive or a politician. Commenting about accomplishment of his mission, John of Kennedy once remarked, all this will not be finished in the first 100 days, nor will it be finished in the first 1000 days, nor in the life of this administration, nor even perhaps in our lifetime on this planet, but let us begin. A study by the Center for Creative Leadership reveals that 40% of leaders going into new roles fail in their first 18 months. Hence, new CEOs must take precautionary measures during this honeymoon period to achieve their leadership effectiveness and ensure organizational excellence and effectiveness. A study shows that most pressing challenges for CEOs are strategic alignment and speed of education. Hence, new CEOs must address these issues earnestly during the first 100 days in office. If CEOs prove well initially, they succeed, otherwise they fail miserably ultimately. All stakeholders restrain from criticism during this honeymoon period as this is the greatest time given for new CEOs to get adjusted and work at their own pace. The media will also restrain from criticism, but it observes everything under its microscope. Hence, the new CEOs must be careful to make use of this time wisely to connect with all stakeholders and create a great impression to survive and succeed in the corporate world. Here is the blueprint for new CEOs. Do you want to do as the crowd does and struggle for a slice of life or to bake your own pie and live on your own terms? If you want to bake your own pie and lead on your own terms as CEO, here is the blueprint for you. The new CEOs must clearly focus on key areas aggressively. The crux of the issue here is how to spot the areas that need to be focused. Hence, they must find out the key and core areas that need attention and energy and focus on them aggressively. As a new CEO, you are always under scanner from all stakeholders. Make sure that the first few days as CEO are highly organized and focus to create everlasting impression as a successful CEO and leader. According to Ram Charan, the majority of CEOs who are fired are not terminated because they lack the vision, but because they fail to engage their own organization in what appear to be well thought out strategies. He rightly quoted. Therefore, the new CEOs must take lots of precautions to help clear cut strategies and link them effectively with solid execution. At the same time, be cautious to present and project yourself professionally as a leader by blending your intelligence, trustworthiness, humanness, courage, and discipline proportionately and judiciously. 
also blend your technical, business and social acumen. Osman Sultan, CEO of Do Telecom suggests a beautiful approach. Let us look into it. Especially this is useful for uh, new CEOs. As a new CEO, you must draw a diagram and put yourself in the center. At the top of the vertical line, put your board and shareholders. At the bottom of this line, the management team and employees. On the left of the horizontal line, put what we call the market driving factors, customers, distributors, industrial partners. On the right, the external non-market driving factors such as regulators, media, academia and so on. Then quickly identify the people on each, each of these fronts that you can trust to deliver. This radar screen you should look at every morning to ensure that you are not losing control of any of these things that could snowball very rapidly in any startup. As a CEO, you can't afford the luxury of not being active on all these fronts. Let us move on to the slide number six. For a new CEO who undertakes this challenging role, there are certain do's and don'ts to stand out from others. Here is a template containing action steps new CEOs must follow to create a positive impact on the minds of all stakeholders. The first step is understand various aspects of the company including its vision and mission. Meet all stakeholders to find out their expectations and aspirations. If you are an outsider CEO, you must travel widely to connect with them. Get the big picture right. Speak less and listen more to list out three major changes you would like to bring about to improve company's bottom lines. Be transparent to build a trust among all stakeholders. Don't follow the strategies of your predecessor as what worked for them might not work for you. Conduct organizational assessment after taking inputs from all sources. Create a CEO template within your mind which must be flexible to execute. Craft your own vision and use diversified communication vehicles including emails, memos, video conferences and face-to-face -face meetings to articulate it effectively. Identify the priority areas to improve the company bottom lines. Create action plan, dividing them into short term and long term goals. Create a winning formula based on your recreated vision. Be a team leader. Build a strong team capitalizing on their strengths and engage team members effectively. Make sure that the employees are rightly placed with their roles and responsibilities to leverage their strengths. At times, good employees are wrongly placed in the organization. Spot and place them properly. Integrate the informal and formal elements of the organization. Align people, plans and practices with organizational goals and objectives. Replace poor performers by good performers following the sales words of Jim Collins who said, have the right people on the bus and the wrong people on the bus. Encourage innovative ideas among employees. Provide inputs to your employees regularly guide and inspire them. Anticipate both internal and external threats and create contingency plans accordingly to counter them effectively. Reorganize business lines to enhance operational excellence. Accelerate the pace but don't be in a hurry to cut costs quickly as you will not be able to know where the real problem may lie. Be flexible and customize your leadership style as per the company's vision and mission and the people around you. See clearly wins to build your momentum. Analyze how do you like to be remembered ultimately. Do you want to be remembered as a soft or hard or flexible or situational CEO or a CEO with a blend of both task and people orientation and create your own CEO brand globally accordingly to stand out from other CEOs. Whether you become a new new CEO of a company or a leader of an industry or a political party, you must follow these uh, steps meticulously to achieve your goals and objectives. Manage internal organizational dynamics and external environmental threats effectively. Take your feedback regularly to bring your behavioral changes within you. Learn lessons from your own experience and from the experience of others to enhance your leadership effectiveness to soar like an eagle. 
A good CEO must be a judicious blend of strategy and execution and proportional blend of business, technical and social acumen. Hence the new CEOs must proportionally mix all these qualities, meet all stakeholders, listen to them, create corporate culture, connecting them on one common thread, build effective teams, craft their vision and articulate it effectively during the first 100 days in their office to achieve everlasting success in the corporate world. In the slide 9, I am going to talk about how to build leadership pipeline for women leaders. This is a very interesting topic for women leaders because women are not, uh, women are not given proper attention globally to groom them as leadership leaders. So, so that's why I took little more interest in building uh, women leaders. Even I write uh, articles on women leaders and women oriented aspects. Eleanor Roosevelt once remarked, a woman is like a tea bag. You can't tell how strong she is until you put her in hot water. Although leadership is uh, not gender specific, we find a very few women leaders globally due to cultural, religious, social and other factors including glass ceiling. The good news is that currently women are kicking the glass ceiling and excelling globally to carve a niche for themselves. For instance, women leaders like Melinda Gates, Michelle Obama, Hillary Clinton, Angela Merkel, Sonia Gandhi, Indira Nooyi, Ursula Burns, Meg Whiteman, Sheryl Sandberg, stood up from others due to their extraordinary contribution in their areas, thus becoming a source of inspiration for upcoming women leaders. Despite several limitations and constraints, women are proving their credentials and capabilities on par with men. They are not behind in any way when compared with their male counterparts. Historically, women played a key role in leadership position and the same is gaining momentum with more number of women leaders playing an, import, an, an important role in leading in all sectors. However, presently the percentage of women leaders is still low when compared with male leaders. It is basically due to gender discrimination and above all perceptions of men towards women that prevent women from excelling as global leaders. Here are the strengths of women which we must appreciate. Women are usually collaborative while men are competitive by nature. Biologically women have a huge potential and are compassionate by nature. They empathize with others and are sensible to others feelings. They are good at soft skills and interpersonal skills. They can handle stress levels better than men. By nature men are more aggressive. However women are soft and well behaved. Women are also good at hidden data of communication. That's why they know the knack of understanding male egos, emotions and feelings better and act accordingly. Women are leaders at home. They lead their spouses and children effectively. They are more responsible towards work. Additionally, they are good at multitasking. There are several myths on women leadership. For instance, women can't perform certain roles in military services. The truth is that women too have the fire like men and they also have ambition to excel on par with men. Additionally, women stand out, stand up for what they believe in and they work with flexibility and compromise. Here is a blueprint to build women leaders. Currently the efforts to build women as, as leaders globally are lukewarm. Hence there must be clear cut strategy for grooming women into leadership roles and responsibilities. The number one stop is encourage girls scores globally, girls scores globally where the leadership skills are cultivated early among the women. Second point is remove the prevailing strong feeling that men are promoted due to potential while women are promoted due to performance. Third one is there must be coordinated efforts and integrated approach from all stakeholders including organizations, women associations, NGOs and government to build women leaders globally to achieve organizational excellence and effectiveness. Women must work harder to prove themselves to excel as leaders in this male dominated society. Remember that the society cannot grow when one sex is denied with opportunities. It is essential to let both genders grow equally based on merit and talent. It requires empathy on the part of men and broad heart to handhold women to groom them as global leaders. 
if women also participate in leadership roles and responsibilities, we will find a better society with lots of prosperity and stability. Race to stop leadership slot is not an easy thing. It is very challenging to go to the top slots and stay. That too, when a woman reaches a top slot, she is really far more capable than men. There is a need for all of us to break stereotypes. Women should break their traditional mental and psychological barriers and move towards leadership roles and responsibilities aggressively. Both men and women are biologically different. The difference cannot be treated as deficiency. It is natural for them to lead differently. Let us understand and appreciate the differences and respect them. If man can take the support of women, there will be all around prosperity for the entire man, humankind. Let us look at women not from gender perspective but from human perspective and judge their competencies and qualifications purely based on their merit. Let us look at women with new lenses. Handhold women and take them forward to leadership positions to enable them to attempt and explore to achieve leadership effectiveness and success. On slide 10, you will find 10 tools which are motivational tools. You can adopt these uh, 10 tools to motivate your employees. So let me talk about the tool number one. Apply different strokes for different employees. Understand the expectations and aspirations of the employees, whether they are motivated by money, power, prestige, promotions, love or knowledge. Give them what they want and it works well as a great motivational tool. Second tool is engage employees effectively. Allow employees to participate in decision making as it enhances employee engagement. Align their efforts and energies towards organizational goals and objectives constantly. They feel that they are part and parcel of the organization and contribute their best. Empower your employees. Empowerment gives you ample time to concentrate your energies and efforts on much bigger organizational challenges. It encourages your employees to come out of their comfort zones and they think in a broader perspective to, execu to execute their tasks effectively. It improves their decision making skills. It enables them to grow as leaders in the long run and you can keep them in the leadership pipeline. Tool number four is create collaborative mindset. Collaborative attitude is better than competitive one as the former leads to fraternity and enhances the performance while the latter results in envy and uh, ill feelings among the employees. Collaborative mindset brings synergy with, within the system thus improving organizational bottom line. Tool number five, encourage job rotation. When superiors put their subordinates in various jobs, they build cross-functional skills and uh, empathize with others by understanding the ground realities. Additionally, they will be able to guide others as they learn executing various tasks effectively. Job rotation is indeed a leadership developmental tool as it acquaints employees with various leadership roles and responsibilities and equips them with several skills and abilities thus developing conceptual skills which are needed for leaders at higher levels. Motivational tool number six is praise publicly. Catch people doing right things and praise them. It encourages other employees to demonstrate similar behavior. Serves as a motivational tool. Improves the performance and productivity. And you earn respect as a leader Additionally, it changes the mindset of the people. Tool number seven, criticize privately. Call the ordering employees privately to your cabin and provide sandwich feedback. Sandwich feedback starts with a positive compliment, follows with the comments for correction of behavior and concludes with a positive compliment. It sounds good for the receiver and paves the way for better behavior. Motivational tool number eight, break the organizational barriers. The Gen Y appreciates working in flat and lean organizations and prefers collegial model of organizational behavior where there is the least gap between the superiors and the subordinates. The baby boomers and the Gen X must understand this fact and mold their leadership style accordingly to achieve the desired organizational objectives. Tool, tool number nine, avoid favoritism. Build trust and confidence among your employees. Treat all employees equally with respect. Remember that all employees are equal to you. 
keep your personal preferences and pace away from your professional roles and responsibilities. Final motivational tool is watch your talk. Organizations can't be run when leaders work from their aid conditioned offices. They can be run only when the leaders interact with the employees regularly and understand their pulse and make decisions accordingly. In slide 11, you can uh, see about uh, soft leadership. Leadership is a widely talked about uh, subject internationally. It gives lots of energy, enthusiasm and inspiration to many people. However, it is highly challenging to practice it. Anybody can talk about leadership from outside, but to get into the leadership role and walk the talk is easier said than done. It is essential to build Indian youth as leaders, as our nation needs leaders to ensure better quality of living and to take the future generations forward. There is an urgent need to build thought leaders in youth rather than ordinary leaders as India being a peace-loving country that created great global leaders including Mahatma Gandhi who pioneered peace with an emphasis on truth and non-violence. Here are the some more details of soft leadership. These are coined and which is making waves all over the world. I wrote a book. I led a webinar conducted by International Leadership Association. I also led a webinar conducted by Thikik.com and uh, several research papers I have got them published and they are being downloaded widely across the world. It's catching up. This concept can be used both for organizations and countries to improve the bottom lines. So now I would like to talk about it uh, from the perspective of shaping youth as global leaders. Leadership basically depends on three aspects. How you communicate with others, how you make decisions and how you take action. When you can execute these three activities effectively, you become a successful leader. However, to evolve as a soft leader, you must communicate with an emphasis on soft skills. Make decisions by blending your head, heart and gut. Take action keeping the ground realities and goals in your view without compromising people orientation. There are 11 C's that constitute soft leadership. They are character, charisma, conscience, conviction, courage, communication, compassion, commitment, consistency, consideration and finally the 11th one is contribution. It's highly challenging for people to cultivate these 11 characteristics. However, if people possess more than six traits, they can get into the fold of soft leadership. Now, how to excel as a soft leader? Let us look at this aspect. When you want to excel as a soft leader, there must, there must not be character gap, there must not be communication gap, there must not be commitment gap, and there must not be courage gap. When you stick to these four sutras, you can excel as a soft leader. Treat the people the way you want to be treated in the old days. But as a soft leader, you must treat all people with respect, especially the people who are loyal to you in rank file. The soft leader possesses humility and a servant attitude. Now, we will talk about Janma and success. The Janma is highly ambitious but impatient. They want to test the heights of success without emphasis on ethics and integrity. They must acquire the right means to achieve their success. Since Janma is in a hurry, they may tend to make more mistakes apart from compromising on integrity and ethics. They must learn that shortcut will cut them short forever. If they want to stand out in the race to stand out as soft traders, they must emphasize on ethics. Although it might take a little longer time, it's worth achieving success with integrity and ethics. It's a fact that people often look at negative things in leaders rather than positive things. As a leader, you are always under a scanner. Hence, you must walk your talk properly with an eye on your ends with an emphasis on ethics, values, and morals. Slide number 12. According to Adam Grant, there are three kinds of people in the world, givers, takers, and matchers. Takers contribute less and expect more from others. In contrast, givers contribute with a great heart without expecting anything from others. Matches fall in the middle of the road who believe in proportional returns for their contribution. They hover in between givers and takers. Givers think of what is that I can do for others. Takers think of what is in it for me. And matches think of what is to better and mutually beneficial to us. Soft leaders are givers, hard leaders are takers, and smart leaders are matches. 
Fighters are plenty who are at the bottom of the pyramid, who are very few in number. They are the people who make a difference to the world. Soft leaders belong to the top of the pyramid. They don't mind who takes credit for their personal achievements. They are altruist with peace, people orientation, a blend of personal humility and professional will. Their pockets may be empty, but their hearts are rich. We need such kind of leaders who can walk their talk to contribute their best to make a difference to the world. Here is the difference between takers and givers. Takers are often found to be selfish people with while well, givers are often found to be selfless people. Takers are often violent, while givers are winners. Takers often blame the circumstances, while givers look for opportunities to work with what they have to contribute. In the present world, takers are more, but givers are less. That's why we have more followers and less leaders. And leaders are givers. There is thrill in giving rather than taking from others. Everyone knows that we don't take away wealth when we depart from this world. We leave this world either with good, good reputation or with bad reputation, depending on our contribution. Remember, leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., and Martin uh, Mother Teresa stood up from others because they were givers. They sacrificed their lives for the welfare of others. That's why they are still remembered today. Do you like to be remembered like them? If so, you must adopt soft leadership where you respect all people with your personality, attitude and behavior and make others truly special. Build soft leaders. Presently people appreciate partnership rather than traditional command and control leadership. They believe in the concept of give respect and take respect. There is a drastic change in the mindset of the people globally due to the rapid changes in the technologies. It is essential to explore soft leadership rather than the traditional leadership styles which got outdated. And to build soft leaders in Indian youth who can emphasize on soft skills rather than hard skills. People orientation rather than task orientation. Transformational leadership rather than transactional leadership. Other central leadership rather than self-centered leadership. What is that I can do for others rather than what is in it for me to bring smiles and make a difference in the lives of others. Remember the words of Winston Churchill. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Now in the slide 13, you can see the leadership message. Be a giver to make a difference to the world. In the slide 14, I have resources. I have three blocks meant for leadership development. You can visit them to know more insights on leadership. If you hit Google with my name, Professor M.S. Rao, my name appears first on the page. You will find around 700 articles online which are free. When you find time, you may read my articles and you may share them with others as knowledge grows when shared. You can post your feedback on my Facebook page. My Facebook page also comes on the first page when you type my name in Google as Professor M.S. Rao. So you can like and share my Facebook page. You can post your feedback there on my Facebook page and uh, you can share my uh, knowledge with others because regularly I will be posting articles uh, related to knowledge because I am very much passionate about knowledge, acquiring knowledge and disseminating knowledge. And I conduct training programs for all levels of management. As you have heard, my vision is to build 1 million new students as global leaders. I want to achieve it with the help of, with the help of social media as there is a limitation to train 1 million people physically. I want to take support of social media which is growing very rapidly. So if you can like and share my Facebook page, whatever I post that will go to your connection so more and more people will get knowledge so we can um, we can educate people more we can bring uh, we can build very good citizens and we can build very good global citizens so in the ecology section uh, this book is going to be published very soon uh, there are reputed people who have endorsed this book like Harvey Mack a very famous person and Marshall Goldsmith who is a very good friend of mine and uh, who is very kind to provide endorsement for most of my books and uh, even he wrote forward for my book and he wrote for, forward for my son's book also. He is a very humble and a very nice person. He is a very he is a famous executive coach in the world. Then other uh, uh, people like Shara uh, Debra, who is, who is a Debra Bentley, is the number one uh, executive coach in women. James Stroke, who is a very famous person who writes about books about American presidents. He is a very good friend of mine who wrote forward for 
the books successful for CEO coaches, which is under nomination. And uh, if more voting get from people, and it may be the winner for this year. And if I win this award, I dedicate this award to India and Indian. And I'll be the first Indian to get this award for my book success tools for CEO coaches. Then you can read this uh, once this book is released. I will update uh, everyone through my Facebook pages. You can read this. You can read my books, and you can. Uh, uh, gift my books uh, during your corporate training programs and uh, likewise you can do so many things. So now we can move on to the question and answer session. Shweta? Uh, yeah, thanks for the insightful presentation Mr. Rao. Let's quickly take up the questions now. Uh, please read out the questions and yeah. their answers so that our, all our users may listen to the insights. So I will read out the questions one by one, and then I will uh, respond to the answer. Is that okay for you? Yeah, that would work. Oh, is it advisable to manage a corporate job and a small side business? The question was raised by Satish Kapsikar. Managing a corporate job and uh, doing a small side business. I feel uh, you should work sincerely wherever you work to get the ropes of what you do. When you learn uh, many things from there, uh, then you can start off your own. Uh, but again, you can do small business provided you have some time once you do your uh, routine corporate job because you can't do injustice to the organization which is paying us salaries. So first you concentrate on your corporate job and apart from that if you find time in the weekends, or uh, uh, at the end of the working hours. You can start doing side business and uh, that gives you some confidence and if it picks up, you know, then you can gradually expand. So it depends upon the person, uh, how he manages his time. And if he has got good time, uh, definitely can do it. It's a very good initiative uh, because we need to encourage the entrepreneurship in India. The next question is, is leadership driven by a group or a CEO uh, or the CEO uh, need to be a superhero? Uh, this question was asked by Ram Rambo. See, CEO is not a superhero according to my knowledge. CEO is a servant leader who serves all the employees according to my knowledge. So I can't uh, agree with the statement that uh, CEO should be a superhero or something of that kind. Nowadays, the leadership roles and responsibilities have changed because of the growing ambitions and especially the Gen Y uh, want to work with uh, partners rather than with leaders. The mindset has changed. So keeping that in view, CEO is not a superhero. He is just a servant for the employees and he is just a servant leader. If, he, if a CEO thinks that he is a servant leader, then only will grow as a CEO. And another question in that, you know, is leadership driven by a group? And the CEO, what he has to do is, he has to uh, lead the people. That means he has to consult the people uh, in the group, then you have to build consensus, then you have to do it. So leadership is basically a group driven. And CEO is a servant leader. That's what the answer for this question. The next question is, do managers need to talk less in order to show their superiority over people who report to him? What should be the best approach? SK Srinivas Kumar. Well, there is nothing like uh, talking more or talking less uh, that the managers must do. But what I feel is that whether he is a manager or a leader, he has to talk less and he has to listen more. This is my ultimate response. Only when they listen more, how they can listen more when they talk less, definitely they can listen more. So when they listen more, they get more ideas and they can, uh, they can win the respect of the people. When, you, when these managers listen to the people, uh, subordinates, then what happens, the subordinates will be very happy that at least uh, my manager has listened to me. So the managers uh, need to talk less only, that's better, except in meetings where they are supposed to talk. It's not, again, the question of superiority. I don't know why this kind of response are coming. There is nothing like superiority, whether, uh, whether he's a CEO or a manager or a leader. 
it these are the days of partnership there is nothing like leadership and followership this is my one line statement you must all remember the next question is how a leader can stay motivated always yes it's a very big challenge for leaders leaders are also human beings only thing they have some special powers special knowledge uh, that's why they have become leaders uh of course they also get uh, they also get dejected if they encounter several challenges so they need to motivate uh, themselves and it's a very big challenge uh, to motivate themselves uh, i can uh, share one uh, technique not only for a leader for a, any common man you can go inside the room and uh, stand in front of the mirror once you go inside the room you close the door you will be alone in that room and uh, you stand in front of the mirror smile in front of the mirror then start shouting i am the winner i am the winner i am the winner like that you know when you start shouting uh, in the room the echo will be higher why the echo is higher because you already close the doors when you close the close the doors the sound will be higher when more sound you hear like i am the winner so that goes to your ears so when it goes to your ears psychologically it will go to your subconscious mind very quickly and you are listening your own words as a winner one thing and you are smiling on the mirror so that is visually you are looking your face uh, uh, smiling and uh, audio wise you are listening your own voice as a winner so when you do this practice uh, whenever you are upset uh, definitely you can uh, uh, stay motivated this is how you can do it at home and in case if you are in office and you have to motivate me just go aside aloof and uh, relax for some time then again you can get charged up and you can stay motivated in the office so this how you can do it in office means you go aside without talking to anybody uh, reflect yourself and uh, recharge yourself this is one thing if you are at home you can uh, stand in front of the mirror by closing the uh, uh, door of the room as a winner by smiling at your face this, this is the best technique you can do many of my followers they are practicing this one this question was raised by yogita patil so next question uh, okay and are there Hello? any are there any further questions that need to be answered mr rao is here now hello uh, no uh, i have right now 1 2 3 4 questions i have answered i think th these are are all. there any questions sushmita no there are no further questions as of now so for any further questions you can connect with mr rao uh, offline as well so okay i i got one uh, one question by yogita so again. that means uh, shall we uh, i think one question has uh, come i think hello yeah yeah there is yes there is a question uh, uh, yogita uh, has come out with one more question so i'll respond to that okay so you keep taking the questions so uh, it's a great opportunity to interact with uh, attendees uh, Yogita is asking one more question how arrogant team members can be handled uh, it's a very big challenge some people are arrogant at the workplace and uh, uh, today i have already shared one technique you know motivational tool different strokes for different people that means people are different so according to the person you have to apply the strokes that means you have to mold as a leader you have to mold your behavior as per the nature of the person somebody may be introvert then you have to encourage him to talk somebody may be extrovert then he can speak out then he can talk and somebody may be arrogant just tell him to cool down and uh, respect him and respect his ego then he will come down then you can talk so like that you know there are uh, different ways so this concept is known as different strokes for different people when you work as a leader in a team you will find various categories of people so when you find various categories of people you can't apply same style the styles have to be different depending upon the different uh, personalities so this is known as different strokes for different people so when you can uh, mold yourself according to the people definitely you can achieve the objectives see one thing you must learn as a leader you can't change uh, you know, sometimes you can't change the behavior of the people then what you have to do you have to mold your leadership behavior according to the nature of the person to build a chemistry and compatibility to get the things done uh, next question is sudha sudha chinna basu has asked one question can we get the email id of the professor rao yes 
my email id is already there on the ppts you can have my email id still you can write down msrlctrg at gmail.com my email id is already there in ppt you can get it from there that is the answer for this uh, next one is learning psychology an important thing for managers it's good if you know the psychology uh, it's always an asset uh, this question was raised by matthews wilson uh, it's a very interesting question if you know a little bit of psychology it's good but in uh, when we uh, i conduct emba classes uh, where you know we teach organizational behavior so which talks about little bit of psychology so psychology knowing uh, something about psychology is always better it's not that you have to do uh, phd in psychology or acquire a uh, course in psychology uh, but you can uh, you can read some books on psychology that adds value to it apart from that by observing the people also by trial and error method you can uh, get to know the psychology of the people that is through experience but you can, if you learn from books and other sources what happens uh, you make uh, you learn quickly and you will be able to apply quickly and you will be able to uh, excel as a better manager next question is by deepak chandra as a leader how to build self confidence self confidence means first you have to believe in yourself and the self confidence comes from your competence if you are having competence then automatically self confidence comes competence how it comes when you are strong in your area when you are strong in your domain when you are strong in your subject you get competence once you get competent you get confident so self confidence comes from your knowledge whether you are a manager whatever the area you are whether you are a singer dancer or a teacher whatever it is you have to be strong in your own area then you will have competence once you have competence that builds your confidence nobody can challenge you of course there are people to challenge you but there will be less problem for you and you will be able to handle any kind of uh, problem when you are acquired with uh, a requisite mindset tool set and skill set uh, that is the blend of all these things that builds you over again self confidence next question by rajesh woma good very interesting uh, lot lots of questions are coming up i am so excited to respond i am team leader can you please uh, provide any certification for project manager uh, right now i don't have any such plans to provide a certification uh, what i do is i provide uh, training programs uh, for uh, at entry middle level or senior level levels i provide leadership training programs my email id is there if anybody is interested they can approach through email id uh, i keep traveling all over to conduct training programs and uh, during the leisure time i keep writing the books that's what i do so uh, right now you know we don't provide any certification uh, any other question i think there is no further question no there are no further question mr rao so let's let's wind up the session hello chatta are there any question there are no further questions mr rao i think we should wind up the session now and for any further uh, okay, questions then, uh, let me let uh, let me let me add uh, one or two, one or two minutes if you can permit or after you speak i, I should speak out no i mean if you want you can go okay. ahead you you can go ahead if you want no let me i just want to wrap up my side okay. and then you can uh, wrap up from your end is that okay for you hello uh, uh, dear friends uh, thanks for your kind support uh, for being with me i uh, for uh, you made uh, this webinar really exciting and i thank uh, techig.com uh, for giving me this wonderful opportunity uh, and i also thank uh, swetha for uh, moderating uh, very nicely making it very pleasant without any abnormalities so i thank uh, swetha uh, for her kind heart and support for moderating the session i thank uh, techig.com and above all i thank you uh, Oh, for being with me for this much time and uh, it's uh, indeed a great uh, honor to share my knowledge with you if you need anything you my email id is there in my in the uh, uh, slide you can contact me and uh, it's uh, have a nice evening thank you very much so all the uh, questions yeah over to swetha yeah so thank you so much mr rao uh, so for all the other questions uh, you can note down mr rao's email id and then you can uh, connect with him offline
you can write down mails. Uh, I am very really thankful to Mr. Rao for conducting this webinar. It was indeed a great session. I would also like to thank all our participants for their support in making this webinar a success. The recording of the webinar will be available on techic.com by tomorrow. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening.